can't it just be uh, posting pictures, you know? <laughs> it's gotta be. It's gotta be all high tech and all that. Yeah, it's really just dumb. two old men complaining about <laughs> Instagram. <laughs> uh, welcome We're to Thunder so and Lightning Gaming. I'm Thunder. Hello, I'm Lightning. I guess there he's not is. here, so I get to be the only Lightning today. Oh yeah. Uh, and what you were just listening to is the soundtrack to Castlevania Symphony of the Night, which came out uh, yesterday, October 2nd, on the PlayStation 1, 26 years ago. Damn. Uh, and this is a, believe it or not, uh, just a coincidence, a game I've actually been playing on my Xbox. Sick. Um, it's still it's still good, 26 years later. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, I feel like this is too bright, but it doesn't look too bright, so I'm going to pretend that it's not too bright i just i'm not used to having a light on me anymore um is it blinding you it's not blinding me it's just like there's definitely a light you know what i mean yeah well yeah um <coughs> hello welcome on in welcome on in hopefully today we don't crash we shouldn't the only reason we crashed was because of uh the storm mm. that was on friday um so uh today uh, as you can tell, uh, Chris is not here. Um, no, I'm Chris. There is. Oh, that's right. Sorry, Chris. I'm yes. super good at guitar, and I like Pokemon a lot. Mm-hmm. To, and have I convinced you that I'm Chris yet? Uh, I'm going to need <laughs> uh, 30 minutes straight on l- why the, the prequel trilogy is actually <laughs> secretly good. <laughs> well, you see... Um, no, because you're my DM in D and D, I you said I'm gonna need, and I thought you were gonna be like, <laughs> got, I'm gonna need you to roll. You gotta, yeah. And I, you know. No, that'd be crazy. I'm gonna need you to roll a Chris check. Roll a <laughs> roll a Chris check, right now. <laughs> um, no, that'd be weird. That be, uh, people who are like that are weird. Who are like, I'm the DM always. <laughs> <coughs> they exist. I just and I'm not one of them. That's the only time you ever say that to me. So I was like prepared for a dice roll. Let me just make sure. Yeah, I think we're good. I think we're going good. Is it you that keeps moving? Why? Why can I not get you center in the frame? Because I'm elusive and mysterious. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna watch this back. This footage, and you're not in it at all. <coughs> okay. Okay. So, um, we have to do this the opposite way because usually Chris tells me about his week first, but that's because he does the news, but I'm doing the news this week, so I'm going to go first. Okay. I'm going to tell you about my week. Okay. And boy, howdy, was it a week. <laughs> um, oh, no. Oh, no, I just didn't know. It's the, it's the exact opposite of what you're thinking. I oh, didn't okay. do anything. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Um, I... Had D and D, you were there for that. I was. Um, I went to uh, fuck that. I'm already bored with that conversation. I went to Chris's concert, <laughs> um, and uh, may I just say, damn, if I may, damn. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm, his mm-hmm. band is really good. It was a really good night. The first band, uh, they were from out of state, and I didn't know them. They were called Happy to See You or Happy to Be Here or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and they they weren't my, you know. Well, it wasn't the kind of music I'm into, mm. but I was like, you know, I can recognize talent. Yeah. And then the second man was Hyber. Hyber's great. We all know this. Oh, yeah. Um, and then I Lions and Lavender, which is Chris's band, which is, is so good. I can't wait for their album. I was listening to their music, and I was just like, this is, you know, I don't know how many of these are going to be on the album, but I, I'm liking what I'm hearing. This is, is going to make a great album, and I'm excited to own it. Yeah, I think they're really getting into their, like, groove yeah, as yeah. a band, which yeah. is cool. Love to see it. Yeah, it's been what a little over a year since their first show, and I think so. Uh, they've already gone through quite a few member changes, which has got to be tough when you're trying to, uh, you know, start a new band. But on top of that, they were able to uh, record an album, which will be out. Uh, Kalen said uh, b- before the end of the year. Hell yeah! So. Is it I'm gonna be a Lions and Lavender Christmas? What happened? The Lion, album? Yeah. I don't think their first album is a Christmas album. No, 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 no. Oh, I mean, oh, like, oh. am are, am I gonna get a Lions and Lavender album f- as a Crimbus present? Oh, maybe. <laughs> uh, I don't actually know if they're. And by a uh, Crimbus present, I mean I buy it around Christmas right. time. Right. <laughs> and by 
a present, I think you might just stream it off Spotify. Mm-hmm. I don't know if there's going to be an actual disc to buy. I'm Fair. not quite sure about that. Um, Either way, I'm ready. Yeah, no, me too. Oh, I don't have the... I should have this open, not the other thing. Fuck that other thing. We're done with that. Um, yeah, no, that was great. Um, I think what I'm learning about myself is that I like my friends and I like their band and I like supporting them, but I do not think that this is my scene. <laughs> I yeah. don't, I, I was just sort of like vibing. I was just sort of sitting with Pauline at the merch table. Just like not really looking at the band, just like, you know, doing my own thing. And I was just like, this music's great. I don't think I want to be here. Like that's kind of where my <laughs> head was at. Like I was, <coughs> so I don't know. I think I'm learning that, um, the the uh, back when i was their manager i sort of like forced myself to like well now i'm doing this you know yeah um and i kind of have to be there yeah yeah i have to be there so i'm gonna be there anyways right so and i think that doing that versus not doing it now has really like like just made me realize that like if Hyber and Lions and Lavender weren't at this show, I definitely would not be there. Fair. Um, when you started that sentiment, you were like, oh, I th- what I'm learning about myself is that I like my friends and their band. Uh. And I thought you were going to stop there. <laughs> I recently learned that my friends are pretty cool. And if you take, the t- like, if, you t- if you take, you know, out there, if you have, <laughs> if you take the time to get to know your friends, you'll find that they're pretty neat uh, yeah. and you should respect them. Pretty like cool. I am going to start doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah um i think i'm i'm kind of with you there i'm like definitely a fan and definitely want to support but i'm not a bar kind of person yeah and i'm not like a big crowds kind of person yeah i think it's more the big crowds for me because like this place has video games i didn't even play any of them i was just like yeah just chilling vibing to the music as best i could yeah that's fair yeah um other than that, I was going to visit my grandfather, but I didn't because I felt not good, so I stayed home. Um, D&D, I think, was a success. I think we talked about this a bit on the video game podcast that I just remembered is totally dead, so I'll talk about it a little bit here. Um, uh, uh, oh, yeah, anyone listening to this, if you are a huge fan of the video game podcast, we recorded one on Friday, but the storm ate it. And it's unsalvageable, and it's it said goodbye. It said goodbye, and it's not coming back. It yeah. warned, it's not gonna uh, be In uploaded to YouTube. To the void. <coughs> Excuse me. Um. Uh, but yeah, we're trying a new format. We're gonna try every week slash every other week for a few hours, rather than once every few months for like a whole day. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I think this is gonna work out better because those whole day sessions. I I love D and D, but like by the fifth hour, I'm kind of like, mm, I would like to go home now. So, and like sitting in the same chair for that yeah. long, and it's just those those are a lot. Well, that's the other thing too is like when you're playing D and D for like four or five plus hours, <laughs> like me. obviously, yeah, you're not gonna want to sit in the same chair the whole time. So yeah. people want to take breaks, and then. That's when, like, oh, but I planned for this, but now we're taking, uh, but I'm not going to s- be like, sit down, everyone. You can't exercise. <laughs> but if it's two hours, it's sort of like, oh, I could sit for two hours. Yeah, exactly. Um, I just want to try one one more. Just give me one sec, sorry. No. I just want to see if I can backdoor a, a Reddit post. I don't know what happened on Reddit. Um, I can't. No, they ruin everything's ruined on Reddit. Nothing works anymore. I can tag this one not safe for work, but I can't tag it with the Yo, what is going on, Reddit? I don't know. I don't use Reddit because social media is a hellscape and I hate it. Um This person was able to post. I don't know. I might have to like Maybe it's just me. I'm gonna have to like delete that app and re-download it or something. <laughs> That's um, because my 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 I was showing you this before we started, but my whole front page is not pages I've 
uh, liked or joined or whatever the word is. It's just pages that Reddit thinks I'd like. Yeah. And then um, when I try to post, it says that no Reddit page on Reddit is accepting text posts, which can't be right. So I think I think something is wrong. And I don't know if it's a Reddit-wide thing or if it's just me, because it seems like other people are posting in places where I wanted to post. But anyways, <laughs> um, uh, how was your week? How, was you, how have you been? My week was pretty good. Um, so I guess I'll start where you started. D- we, we had D&D. That was pretty good. Hell yeah. Um, <coughs> I spent Thursday at Seb's house because I get to do free laundry there. And I work from home on Thursdays. So that was nice. Um, and then on Friday... Um, Catherine and I were supposed to clean our apartment, <laughs> mm-hmm. but we didn't. Okay. And instead of doing that. <laughs> I really thought that was going to be the end of the story. <laughs> Catherine and I were supposed to clean our apartment, but we didn't. <laughs> and then the next day. <laughs> <laughs> no. So instead of doing that, um, Catherine reorganized like her cabinets in the kitchen. Okay. And that's um, a, That's like sort of cleaning. Yeah. It's just not like cleaning like, like and surfaces yeah and stuff. yeah yeah um and i was like you know i want to do something now <laughs> so <laughs> so i <coughs> rearranged my room okay I, I moved my bed to a different location and my bureau to a different location okay. and all that's everything else uh starting at like 11 30 p.m because I'm crazy. Oh, uh, that's the nighttime one. Yeah, that is. Um, I didn't go to sleep until 1 a.m. Damn. Um, I don't know why I did that. I was just like, I need to move my room around now. I don't think I would be even be able to do that. Like, ignore the mess. Ignore the clutter. Like, my room is, like, very compact. Yeah. I feel like, like, because of where the window is versus where the closet is, there's really no other place a bed could go. Yeah. So... Um, it's true. Like, I couldn't even move my TV over here if I wanted, because whatever I put here is blocking the closet. Oh, yeah. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, this is the only way to arrange a room. <laughs> yeah. When I was in uh, high school for a few years, I had a um, a bigger bed mm. that took up, like, like most of the room. Mm. Um, but the end. <laughs> I don't have that anymore. Well, good. I mean, gives you more space. Um, so, yeah, because of that, I was very tired on Saturday. Uh, and I didn't go to Chris's show, despite being half of his number one fan. <laughs> and what? Uh, what? What? Catherine and I together oh, make the number one fan. Do the Dragon Ball Fusion dance. Yeah, we do. Um number one fan. Correct. It's not. It's not... The typical, like, it's not Kels Atherin. It's not Kathleen. It's just Kelsey and Catherine make number one fan. Correct. So, um, and Catherine had a, she had a lot of work things to do. So neither one of us went. We just kind of, like, uh, couch potatoed. Hell yeah. It was pretty awesome. And I went to bed early. Nice. It was nice. Cool. Um, <coughs> and then I choked on nothing. Um, Hello, sorry. Hello, Mason. Welcome on in. Uh, thank you for being here. I know it's a weird day. Hi, Mason. Um, Sorry you got just my coughing as you <laughs> entered. Um, uh, oh, I guess we didn't explain why Chris isn't here. Oh, um, yeah. But maybe we don't. Maybe that's none of our business. Chris should For be a mysterious unknown yeah. reason, Chris, Chris could not be here. Chris may or may not be back on Friday. If not, he'll definitely be back on Sunday uh, for more Final Fantasy X. Yeah. <coughs> Uh, and then, you know, since then, I don't even think I did anything of note on Sunday. Oh, Catherine and I cleaned, finally. Like oh, hell yeah. The cleaning yeah. that we didn't do on Friday. Full circle. Uh, and then, yeah, I my life is pretty boring. I went to work yesterday, <laughs> and I went to work today. Whoa, two days in a row. <laughs> crushing it. Hell yeah, dude. So, that's how my week has been. Uh, pretty, I, I, pretty normal. I always struggle to talk about my week. On this podcast, because I play a lot of video games, but we have a podcast for that. 
So I'm not gonna on both podcasts be like I've been playing a lot of Mortal Kombat. Like it's I it's I you hear talk about it on the other one, you know. Fair. Um. Well, if we're gonna talk about things we did a lot, I read a lot. So yeah. Is that. What have you been reading? A uh, book or a comic book? A book. I am in the last book right now of the uh, Throne of Glass series, which is a Sarah J. Maas series. I've read her other two series already. Uh, And I am currently in denial that this is the last Sarah J. Maas book I will read for a while, but it's okay. This is the one that all of you are reading, right? Or have read? Um, By all of us, do you mean me, Catherine, and Pauline? Pauline, I believe, has not read oh, Sarah okay. J. Moss yet. She likes Marissa Meyer, which is also on my list to read. Um, I, I, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure she hasn't read any SJM yet. Uh, Mason says Chris went to the store for cigarettes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he's he's definitely coming he's back. Definitely coming back. Okay, everybody, shut up. <laughs> um. Yeah, I believe the one you're reading is the one I thought was a webtoon, but it is not. It is an actual book. Sure. I Wait. Think. Okay. Throne of Glass or the specific book I'm reading, Kingdom of Ash? No, just the whole. I heard you guys talking about it, and I was like, oh, I, and some some. I think you were talking about a webtoon, and then you quickly changed subject to this book or something. But I I thought that this book was a webtoon, and then I found out that no, they're actual. Uh, novels, fantasy novels. Yes, the the webtoon that that Pauline and I both like, that I am very far behind in, is called Lore Olympus. Yes, that I knew, that I knew, that I know <laughs> about. There's also a they, 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 they you could get by that a real one, right? <laughs> what? Can you buy Lore Olympus, but it's like a real book? Oh yes, they so it all came out. Into a yeah, it all came out on the webtoon, and then they made it yeah. into a book. Yeah. I feel like that's rare. I feel like that's pretty cool that that happened because I feel like webtoons as far as i can tell i've never read one but i I feel like it's like the wild west of like (laughs) writing comics like because i feel like can't you write webtoons about licensed characters that you don't own that is a great question i don't know the answer to you i don't know if i've ever well actually that's not true i have read a batman Mm. webtoon before so maybe you're right yeah yeah Um, um no it's cool it's cool when People find success on really niche platforms, like 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 Pro ZD. He used to post vines, and now he's like one of the biggest voice actors in video gaming. Oh, that's cool. <coughs> so it's a, I don't know. It's cool when like the weird niche, yeah, app or social media platform or whatever turns into a career for someone. Yeah, uh, I haven't been reading webtoons in a very long time, but that Batman one I think is called wayne family matters okay it's very cute uh bruce wayne has all of his kids together in one house and it's just like normal family shit but like they're superheroes so it's like i don't know bruce gets something wrong and he has to apologize to his kid or whatever or like they i don't know have a family dinner that goes wrong or whatever yeah it's, it's it's cute so when you say all his kids like you mean the all the, the robins the robins and barbara yeah yeah cool all of them together love it love it i love seeing what um whenever they do like batman but in a different time period i love seeing what they do with those characters mm. cuz they could just do nothing they could just not be there it's true but uh they're usually there at the end um <laughs> okay let's talk about news yay um so for those of you who were there on Friday, uh, I'm going to repeat myself a bit uh, because the video game podcast we recorded uh, got uh, eaten by Jesus. So <laughs> we're going to uh, we're going to uh, talk about one of the news stories we talked about before. Um, we're going to talk about uh, Unity. So um, just for the sake of over explaining. Um, Please do. I don't know what we're talking about. No. Yeah, of course. So. So when you make a game, there's the people who develop it and the people who publish it. So, yep. for example, the DuckTales Remastered was developed by WayForward. They're the ones making it. They're the ones drawing the game and making it go. And then, But it was published by Capcom. Okay. Um, now, 
every single game is on an engine. That's just like the basically the program it was made on. Um, and it's always different, right? So going back to Capcom, Capcom has the RE engine, RE stands for Resident Evil. They made this engine for Resident Evil 7, and it's a really good engine, so they've been using it for – they use it for the new Street Fighter. They've been using it for everything. Um, now, if you're an indie developer and you want to make a game, sometimes indie develop, sometimes indie games are made by, like, one dude, right? Mm-hmm. So there are free-to-use engines. Okay. And one of them is called Unity. Um, and the people who make Unity, the people who run Unity – uh, are are <laughs> just being real stinkers. Oh no! So they basically came out in a statement, and they were like, "Okay, so uh, for every download of your game, not purchase, not install, download. Sorry, no, wrong. Install. It's installs for every okay. install of your game, not downloads, not purchases. For every install of your game, um, you have to give us twenty cents." Um, and this is going to apply retroactively uh, to the games that have been using Unity forever. Um, so they basically said, like, if your game sells 500,000 copies, uh, you then have to give us 20 cent per install. Which doesn't sound like a lot, but uh, the way Jesse Cox put it, who is where I got all this news from because he had the complete story on his news channel, mm. is that if you make a game, if you release a game now, and it makes 500,000 uh, installs by February of 2024, you will owe Unity $20,000. Sorry, $60,000. Shit. Is what you will owe Unity. Um, so this obviously sucks. There's been a lot of backlash, a lot of people saying this is dumb. Uh, there's been at least one class action lawsuit that an indie de- developer is threatening. Uh, the developers of the video game Cult of the Lamb which is an indie game, which is relatively new. It's like a year old. Mm-hmm. Uh, they said <coughs> that if they go through with this, they're just going to pull the game and no one can buy it anymore because this is bullshit and they're not going to pay that. Um, there was a very credible uh, death threat sent to the Unity offices. Turns out that death threat came from within Unity. What? Because apparently... The employees at Unity also hate this. Apparently, there was like a company-wide meeting where the higher-ups, the corporates, were like, hey, we're going to do this. And basically, every single employee was like, hey, don't do this. Don't. This, is, this is really bad. Um, and they were like, ah, we're going to do it anyways because we like money. Um, so then all this backlash, they come out in a statement, and they essentially like – in the weirdest way, they essentially just doubled down. They were like, okay, 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 okay. First of all, we're sorry. That's what you want to hear, right? We're sorry, I guess. So now, it, it doesn't apply to games that already came out. Just games that came out, come out are going to come out after February 2024. And it's not 500,000 games uh, installs. It's a million installs. And it's like, that's still shitty. Like, it's so yeah. weird. Because like, like, we've seen this before. Corporates will be like, here's a business thing we're making, and then the entire internet will be like, fuck off. And then they'll be like, okay, 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 we're not doing that. But that's not this. This is them being like, we're still going to do this. We're just going to be shitty about it and yeah. like make it seem like we're – also, we're sorry, I guess. That's what you wanted, right? Us to apologize? We're, we feel bad about it or whatever. Like, I, if you want to make money off of a game engine, just make a different game engine and don't make that one free. Like, I don't understand why it had to be this one, and they had to be like, all right, now it's not free anymore. Right, yeah. I I don't and, get it. And in, in regards to, like, making money, like, it's it's just the corporates that are making money. You know, yeah. it's not, it's not the, it's not like, if they, if they were like, we <laughs> are That's why they this. can't make a new one, because they need all the people who actually made it to make it. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, and if they were like, we're doing this shitty thing because we want to play our pay our employees good. I would be like, okay, I see where you're coming from. Still, don't do this. It's kind of shitty, but I can. You're like, yeah. at least you're trying to be good natured about it. But this isn't. It's just you can't you can't make business decisions just that make you money. You have to make smart business decisions. Right. So yeah. So if, if they are going through with this, which it seems like they are, um, uh. If you're an indie developer making your game on Unity right now, start over <laughs> because there's yeah, throw it in the trash. <laughs> move over to uh, um, 
God, I forget the name of that other one. Um, but there, there are others. I, I understand that Unity is the most accessible, but um, there, there are others. Because um, this one is gonna uh, really fuck you over. Yeah, um, that also, sucks. you have to consider things like bundles. Like sometimes games will be in bundles where, let's say it's a bundle of a bunch of horror games or mm -hmm. a bundle, or God forbid, it's a bundle for to support Black Lives Matter or right. trans activism or something. So now. Um, you are not getting the money from your game, but you still have to pay the install fee that Unity is trying to set up. And then when you get into you get into talking about Xbox Game Pass, where if you put your game on Unity, it's Microsoft that's going to have to pay the install fee. Right. So if, if if this really goes through, expect no future Unity games to be on Xbox because why the f uh, to be on Game Pass because why the fuck would Microsoft pay that install fee? Just yeah. for that defeats the whole purpose of Game Pass of this like we'll publish it for you and then it'll be free and you get this money and the players get it's it's the, the whole thing is no if we if the if the devs have to pay twenty cents per install it's just it's the it's the shittiest scummiest thing uh, that's happened in the video game industry in a hot minute yeah that sucks dude i mean i think <coughs> we can all collectively say fuck ceos right oh my god i know <laughs> like pretty much all of them they suck yeah i if the uh multiple strikes happening or anything to uh go off of yeah they don't care about this is this is the this is where every conversation about this devolves into. This is where the strikes go. This is where the Sony Spider Man stuff goes. It they don't care about the consumer. They don't care about the worker. They just care about themselves getting more money. Yeah. And they don't care how they get it or who they fuck over. Late stage capitalism, baby. If if Brandon Lee Mulligan has taught me anything, it's fuck CEOs. Yeah, hell yeah. Um. Oh yeah, because he did the. Uh, yeah, no, I know what you're talking about. I I don't remember. I don't think I ever watched those, but I know what you're talking about. Brandon Lee Mulligan used to do like, um, it's like a comedy skit where it'd be like, now I'm the CEO of Tide. Oh okay. Yeah. Um, and it was satirical and. Obviously, poking fun at big business and all that. Um, let's move on to something happier. Yay! Because I want to talk about um, I want to talk about a movie. Okay. Have you heard of this new Argyle movie? Have you heard of this? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm so excited for this. Let me let me paint you a picture. I'll tell you the whole story about this movie. Okay. So Matt Vaughn, director of the Kingsman movies. Okay. Few a year and a year year and a half ago. <coughs> He comes out, and he was like, I have purchased the movie publishing rights to an unpublished book for 200 k This will happen sometimes. So you'll, movie studios will buy the movie rights to a book before the book is out. This happened with a simple favor. Um, oh. So this is what he's saying he's doing, right? Uh, the book is called Argyle, and it's by an author named Ellie Conway. Okay. The Hollywood Reporter tries to get in contact with this woman and cannot. And basically the Hollywood Reporter is like, if this woman exi doth exist, <laughs> then we cannot find her. She's, like, really reclusive. So that's a story about that. Cut to the trailer for this movie drops. The movie's okay. called Argyle. The trailer starts, and the logline of this movie, if you read, like, the description of the YouTube video, it's a, it's a spy thriller. So it's a very generic, like, he's a spy on the run, and then betrayal and all that shit, right? So the movie starts, and it's Henry Cavill as Agent Argyle. And he's acting opposite... Dua Lipa in her acting debut, except she was in Barbie. So I don't know what they're on about about that. We know how I feel about this situation yes, happening right yes, now. Yeah. Oh, you. yeah, you mean the sexiest two the people two on the planet? My two main celebrity crushes in yeah. one room. Are you yes, serious exactly. right now? Dancing all sexy and being <sighs> all James Bondy about it and stuff. So she... She's there. She's like playing the stereotypical like I'm sexy, but I'm also an agent type stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Argyle has like a dude in the van on the street that's played by John Cena. Oh, my God. So the first 30 seconds of this trailer is like a pretty, pretty run of the mill spy through. You got shooting, you got ladies, you got car chases, all that. And then it stops. And then the trailer pulls back a layer. 
and you find out what the movie is actually about. Um, and you find out that Ellie Conway is a fictional character created by Matt Vaughn, who's being played by Bryce Dallas Howard. She is a, a fictional author in the world of this movie who is writing the Argyle series. Oh, damn. So she meets a real espionage agent played by Sam Rockwell. This movie is stacked. I, yes. First of all, Holy yes. Holy shit. <laughs> So her and Sam Rockwell get he, she gets tied up in like real spy stuff, right? Even okay. though she's like, all I did was write a book about it. So it turns out the plot of this movie is that every time Ellie Conway writes an Argyle book, it comes true in real life. Oh, so they essentially like find the author and they're like, people are after you, this that. Now it's real spy stuff. The real main villain is Brian Cranston. Um, Samuel L. Jackson is in the movie. <laughs> what the fuck? Um, because he everybody's was in, the in it. The movie. Um, <coughs> so this sounds dope. So yeah, um, yeah. If you've seen the the images of the cat in a, there's like a cat in a backpack. Um, that's like the thing of this movie. They're going on all these spy things, but they have a cat in like a little cat backpack. Um, so at the end of the trailer, you know how trailers will sometimes like have words in them, like Shrek Two. It'll be like. Footage of Shrek, footage of Shrek. He's back in the swamp. But yeah, so in this trailer, <laughs> it says, once you know the secret, don't let the cat out of the bag. And then it cuts to Sam Jackson's character saying, it's time for you to meet the real Agent Argyle. And then they, no shit, show a montage of every single character they've shown in the trailer so far, real or fake. So on top of everything, on top of the meta narrative that Matt Vaughn has created with this lie that he told us years ago about this fake author on top of the movie not really being a spy thriller except all the promotional material making it look like it's a real spy thriller on top of it being about a psychic author who is foretelling the 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 the, the, the events of real life on top of all that they have a like mystery identity like who done it that they don't want you to spoil so much so that they put that shit in the first trailer this damn. movie comes out in February, by the way. Hot damn. I am like... This sounds so good. I am so excited. It also sounds like a mind fuck. What if... What if Agent Argyle is the cat? Dude, that's that'd be dumb, I think. I think <laughs> that'd be dumb. I thought about it for a sec. Um, no, I, I just like... I like heard about this. Like, and I, I, heard, I heard a few things. And I was like, let me just watch the trailer. And then I was like wait, what the fuck is happening? So I did some research. I was like, oh, it's like a big, like, real-life mind fuck that started years ago. And also, this book, I'm sure they'll release something. You can literally pre-order this book on barnesandnoble.com, even though it doesn't, isn't real. <laughs> That's what? Even though it doesn't, isn't real. That, um, damn. I yeah. can't, I can't not, I, okay. Like, put aside <laughs> everything about this actual movie for a second. I can't believe, like, literally a week ago, you were like, hey, who's, <laughs> yeah. who's the hottest celebrity in your eyes? And I was like, well, you know I love yeah, Dua Lipa. Yeah, you were like, well, Dua Lipa Ovs, and I guess Henry Cavill is And He's Henry Cavill is perfect, no notes. <laughs> and Yeah, they made a movie around you. Maybe I'm a psychic author. Ma oh, no. <laughs> it goes a layer deeper. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I'm just like... I, I cannot wait. I don't, like, know, like, I can't believe I didn't hear about, like, this movie came out of nowhere. Yeah, that's... <coughs> Matt that's Vaughn takes a break from making the Kingsman movies to do th this, and it looks like the craziest bit of meta-narrative that I've, like, has been released since WandaVision. <laughs> like, it's, it just looks crazy, and yeah. I'm just, like, so excited for it. I watched the trailer over last weekend probably eight times. <laughs> I just, like, I, I can't understand... But I want, but I need to understand. Isn't it crazy, like, what the human mind comes up with sometimes? You're oh, I know, like, right? Yeah. Somebody wrote this. Somebody decided this was going to be the thing. Yeah. And then to go a step further, somebody uh, to, to to talk about CEOs and corporate, someone above the person who created this story approved this yeah. to be put they to said, a movie. Yes. Um, Let's go. I just can't believe, like, sometimes you'll watch a movie and it tricks you. And the movie you start watching is not the movie you finish watching. Th that happened in the trailer <laughs> for this movie. <laughs> so who fucking knows, man? Who know. knows? I uh, like. It's just, like, it's unclear how much of the movie is going to be 
Henry Cavill and Dua Lipa giving each other googly eyes. It's unclear how important, like, I don't know. I, 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 I Literally, I, that's all you had to say. I was already going to see this movie. <laughs> <laughs> Stu Lipa and Henry Cavill like being in a room together that's it that's all that will get me to watch this movie but it does sound very good also okay so I have some news stories that Chris sent me and I've done something that I think will be fun I haven't looked at them yet I'm looking at them sight unseen right now well fun so we're gonna experience we'll them we'll both be surprised uh, we're gonna experience them together yay uh, so the first one I'm sure it's this and not this one. There's two on this page. <laughs> um, the Office reboot in the works with creator Greg Daniels. Oh. Uh, the the reboot reboot. The reboot reboot. The American American version. Yeah. Um, I have seen maybe two episodes of The Office. I've seen the whole thing. I um, my siblings and I have argued about this i almost said fought that's <laughs> too strong a word uh we have argued about this because i we personally wrestle every <laughs> christmas about how about uh our office discourse i punched my brother in the throat over this okay <laughs> um no we my my brother and sister both think that the office is a better show than parks and rec and i just oh, okay completely disagree uh, do you think parks and rec is better yes same creator right same I th- like i think so yeah same concept. It's right, like a right. it's like a hidden documentary. Yeah, it's interview like they, they did this. Show. They first they for some reason did this with High School Musical, the musical, the series as well. It's like a documentary, but they don't explain why or how. Right. Um. So, I. And, um. Sorry to cut you off. No. It's is fine. is what we do in the shadows also like that? I don't know. I haven't seen what we do in the shadows. Uh, it's been kind of on my list though because I do like vampires and that one's a vampire comedy. And well, it it's also the fun. same people who made that gay pirate show that I don't know the name of, right? Yes, our flag our means f- death. Yes, yes. And I haven't watched that either. That's also on. M- I have a way too long a list of things <laughs> to watch. But um, yeah, I've I've seen all of The Office and like a lot of people will like rewatch The Office because it's like their favorite show and they're obsessed. I just don't feel that way. About yeah. the office, yeah, the I office is ask. just like a little bit too much for me. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that's kind of my issue with it. Um, but I was gonna ask, uh, you, but you kind of answered already. I was gonna ask if you're one of those people who like just like rewatches the office over and over again. Nah, I've seen it once all the way through, and like, they're just a lot of it was funny, but like there were moments in the office where I felt so uncomfortable, I stopped watching it. For like a f- at least a day, so, so you felt bad just because I felt so un- like there's an episode where Dwight uh, recently started owning the building that their office is in, okay, and he decided to test everybody's fire safety, oh. um, and by locking all the doors and lighting things on fire. Oh, great! Uh, so everybody was locked inside the office and it was on fire, and then Stanley has a heart attack. Oh, great. And I was oh, like, good. this is the most horrific thing I've ever watched. No, it I need to shut this off now. Sounds super funny. Uh, <laughs> Mason <laughs> says, what we do in the shadows is amazing, and uh, it is also a, a mockumentary. Mm. That is the word that I couldn't come up with. Thank you, Me Mason. Either. Yeah. Mockumentary. Um, okay, next up. So what's fun about these screenshots is that they're of Facebook posts. Uh-huh. So right <laughs> below the Office reboot uh, is from a, a post from Chris's mom. <laughs> it's just a cute little birthday message. Shout out to Cheryl. Shout out to Cheryl. And shout out to her post that says, Happy birthday to the one that made me a mom. Hope you have an awesome day. Love you with all my heart. Aww. Um, <laughs> so next up, uh, Aww, Jesus Christ. Okay this, is the, okay, this is the problem with me reading them sight and scene. Because now we're in a great mood because of Cheryl. Because of Cheryl. Yeah. Uh, now we have to talk I mean, about the fact Cheryl that. Cheryl always puts me in a good mood. And now we have to talk about the fact that uh, the Dumbledore actor Michael Gambon has passed away. Oh, yeah. I knew that already. Um, uh, he was 82, which is like uh, older than I thought. Yeah. I remember there was a big like. Because uh, for those of you who don't know, Harry Potter 1 and 2 had a different, different Dumbledore actor that yes. did pass away in between movie 2 and 3. Yeah. And then when they got Michael Gambon, I feel like there was a discussion about like he's too young, but like. He, Fucker is 82. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like the life expectancy for humans is way too high now. Because, like, people die at 82, and I'm like, that sounds reasonable. And people are like, he was so young. And I'm like, was he? Yeah. Do you know 
I'm going to look it up just so I... Do you know how old Samuel L. Jackson is? I'm going to guess 65. He's 74. Holy shit. 74 still still hanging out with the Hulk and... Damn. And, and um, Hawkeye and... <laughs> Werewolf by Night. You know, all them guys. Yeah, everyone's Uh, favorite Marvel people, Werewolf by Night and... uh, Moon Knight. uh, Yeah, the girl... No, but only the girl from Moon Knight. And, Um, yep, that one and and, um, uh, Crocodile Loki. Crocodile, yes, Crocodile Loki. or no Alligator Loki? Alligator Loki. I think it's an alligator. It's an alligator. I'm pretty sure it's an alligator. Yeah. Um, um, But there's probably also a Crocodile Loki. If there's, like, infinite Lokis. Infinite multiverses, yeah. Um, I thought that Loki season two was out. It is not. Um, oh. but I was because I thought it was out. Uh, it comes out Friday, I think. But because I thought it was out, uh, I was on the page for the episode listening, and I did not realize that that episode, the one where he meets a bunch of Lokis, is called Journey into Mystery. Ooh. Did not realize that Journey into Mystery is the original serial that Thor was introduced in. All oh. the Thor characters that we know and love today, uh, Thor, cool. Loki, Odin, Angela, they were all re- uh introduced in journey into mystery that's that's nice that's um, pretty fun yeah the uh um the war of the realms side story that clint mcelroy wrote is okay. also called journey into mystery oh cool um anyways yeah i my <laughs> this is so horrible my mom uh messaged in our family group chat and said dumbledore died with a sad face and my brother wrote back spoilers Oh, damn. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to lie. I would also have assumed that she was just, like, reading the book for the first time. No, she, no. She, she I read. I saw that message, I mean. She read Harry Potter to us when we were young. Dude, that's what my mom did. Yeah. We had the audiobooks, and when they stopped releasing those quick enough, my mom would just read them. Yeah, she read them to me and my brother until I got scared, and then she only read them to my brother. Did you? And then I picked it up when I became a middle schooler because I was old enough. Did you ever listen to those uh, Harry Potter audiobooks? I think we had the first one on audiobook, but that was it. The guy it was who, a cassette tape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the guy who did it, uh, his name was Jim Davis, I Oh, yeah, think. he's, like, super awesome at, at audiobooks, right? Yeah, he did, like, all the voices and stuff, and his McGonagall voices will always be in my head. He's nice. also, I don't know if you've seen... Um, Pete's Dragon. He's the villain in Pete's Dragon. He's the like snake oil salesman who comes to town. Is, oh, okay. Yeah. I think I've only seen like bits and pieces of Pete's Dragon. It's it's good. It's old. It's yeah. Nah. Um Disney Plus. What is this? Why is this news? Oh, Disney Okay. I didn't read it all. Disney Plus has begun uh password sharing crackdown. No. Um so No, absolutely uh, not. Just like Netflix tried to do or is still going to do. Yeah, nothing has happened with Netflix. Netflix, don't come for me. I use my dad's Netflix, (laughs) and nothing has happened. Yeah, I don't exactly know how hollow that threat was. It seemed pretty real, but then, uh, yeah. Um, Yes, this one I did hear about. Um, Las Vegas man arrested in connection to Tupac Shakur's killing 27 years after the rapper's death. So someone has actually been... Oh, damn. Uh arrested for the fatal drive-by shooting of Tupac Shakur. Wow, it took them long enough. I know, right? This is like Shit. this is like 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 it was like the Zodiac killer and then this. <laughs> it was like yeah. because this also had its own like he's not people think he's not really dead and all that stuff. Um but uh yeah, yeah. He's just hanging out at his mom's house <laughs> like okay. Yeah. Um oh, this is the last this is the last news story that chris has for us the last news story ever in the world so make it count okay well here it is it's super exciting (laughs) toys r us making big comeback with 24 new retail stores oh well good for that good for that i I mean i could finally load up on skylanders again (laughs) i haven't been in a toys r us since my nephew was a baby so it's been kelsey they're all probably eight years they're all gone you can't you couldn't I know, I know, <laughs> I know, I know, I know. But, like, it wasn't, th- th- it was pretty recent. It was, like, the last few years, right? Um, That Toys R Us closed? No, I, I feel like I was still in high school, maybe. But maybe I'm In high school? 
Maybe maybe I'm wrong about that. Hold on. My nephew was born almost nine years ago. That Hold was on. not high school. Hold on. Hold maybe on. it was. Nine no. years ago was high school. No, it wasn't. Nine years ago? I was ago? in college when he was born. Nine years ago. It was 2014. 20, was 2014. Oh, so that was college. You're right. Um, how do I Google what I'm... I know because to? of the person that I was dating. I was with them at the time. How do I Google what I'm trying to Google? What, sorry, <laughs> my brain has lost all thoughts. What are you trying to Google? 2018. 2018 is is. Oh no, nope. Just kidding. That's something different. Fuck. How do I? When? I want to know when they closed. Does it? Know. Did it not? Did it not? Should I also try to Google oh, 20, it? Oh, it's 2018. It's 2018. Okay, so yeah, Until it was only liquidation and closing in 2018. The company owned. Okay, so that's not. It's only five too, years ago. That's not as far away as I thought it was. Um, all right, um, lettuce, here's, I'm going to explain to you what I'm going to do. Lettuce? Gonna go you don't like lettuce. <laughs> I don't, you're right. <laughs> That's a great point. <laughs> you found an Easter egg. Huh. Uh, I've gone to Google Chrome, and I've gone incognito. Good. Because I don't want this shit. I don't want them to actually think I want to buy from goop.com. Fair. You got to protect your cookies. Which is the website that I'm on. Get away from my cookies. Um, so we got, oh. A welcome gift. Sign up for emails. Fuck no. Um, but you don't want a welcome gift. <laughs> I don't want a welcome. A little gift. vagina no. egg. No. A little, a little vagina candle. Everything was vaginas <laughs> no. at this fucking company. We've got we've a got, jump rope. So we've got yeah a thousand dollar jump rope. We've got made by Goop. We've got beauty, fashion, wellness, and then we've got food and home. And by wellness, they mean sex toys. Hmm. You want me to pick one? Or I could pick one. I want to know what made by goop means. Sure. Um, oh, we've got goop. Oh, I see. Made did by I goop. Did I pick the wrong thing? No, it's just not a category like I thought it was. Made by goop means that they sell things that other people make. Ah. So it's just like I clicked on made by goop and it was just every other category again. That makes sense. Um. So I guess Goop sex toys, Goop supplements and protocols, G label by Goop jewelry. What? What? G label by Goop jewelry. Okay. What about that is hard to understand. G label by Goop jewelry. It doesn't matter how I say it; it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> G label by Goop jewelry. Sixteen products, huh? That's how many. And not a single one under 500 bucks. Well, this is a, this is a, uh, th these are words, man. Are they? Yellow, gold, and black pave ear cuff for 895. Uh, 895? Yeah. For Here's an ear cuff? Yeah, for an ear. Not even like a full on through the ear piercing Earring? Um, I believe it. I believe it's piercing the ear. Um, that's to get a good. That's oh, outrageous. Yeah, it's, it's 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 piercing the ear. Okay. Um. Now we've we've got a Devin Pave link necklace for eight thousand bucks. No. Uh. Yeah. Jewelry. I'm. Um, jewelry is not. Jewelry is just it's kind of tools and devices. Tools and devices. This is where I'm at. What are you? Oh, no. No. Oh, God. It's like a... Ugh. I don't even want to know. I don't even want to know. Okay. No, we're doing it. I changed my mind. We're doing it. Okay. Because uh, I don't know what it is. Um, now, Goop has uh, updated their website in a way that ruins our game because the price is always on the screen. So I'll have to, like, what if I do this? Nope, it's still there. <laughs> uh, I tried. Okay. Um, so here, this is called the. Oh man, this is a lot of. Uh, there's a lot of words. Okay. This is the Doctor X. So it's capital D, capital R X. Okay. No space. So it's the Dirk Spec Spectralite TM Eye Care Max Pro. 
it looks like so it's like it's like uh oh okay and it, it does the beams onto your face yeah it look like a uh, it look like a <laughs> hawkeye's mask <laughs> but it has like it has like oh there we go um it has like the the i don't know uv rays or whatever the fuck to make you look like a third grader <laughs> oh kelsey you don't have to guess i have a whole product oh, description okay, for please you do this red light therapy treatment for eyes helps boost collagen smooth the look of wrinkles firm and refined textures in just three minutes a day the high-tech hands-free skin perfecting device uses 96 led red lights to deliver amazing results around the eyes it's easy to use it automatically shuts off after the requisite three minutes just in case you fall asleep and mm -hmm. try to kill yourself mm -hmm. uh, and it's made with a flexible silicone strap that you can adjust for comfort uh, and then they do bullet points so we've got hands-free device automatic sh this is all stuff we know already automatic shut off after three minutes usb enabled device with charging indicator light universal fit I'd hope so. Travel friendly. If I see you doing this on a plane, I'm going to get another plane. Uh, flexible silicone design and adjustable head strap. Most of that was repeats. Um, not going to lie, this thing looked weird and I wanted to do it. It might be, it, I don't know if the price will be funny or not. But, um, oh, also, the part of the page where it usually says, like, the brand that made it, it's just a dude's name. And his name is Dr. Dennis Gross. No. So, like, basically what you said is what I said. It's a thing. It goes beams into your face uh -huh. and makes you, makes look, you like look like a third, like a third grader. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That would be the helps boost collagen, smooth smooth the look of wrinkles, firm, and refined texture. I should I should be a copywriter for them. <laughs> um. Okay. So, now I have to guess the price of this thing. Yeah. Oh, God. Okay. And it's, uh, it's, <coughs> it's not... Uh, price is right rules, so it's just closest. Okay, 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 okay. Well, and by closest, you mean just me, right? Because you already know what the price is, unless people guess in the We're chat. We're going to guess, yeah, people are going to guess in chat. So okay, if okay. So to guess the price of this Dierkst Spectralite TM Eye Care Max Pro um, that shoots laser beams into your face and makes you look like a third grader, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you can put that price in chat. We'll wait a few minutes. I'm going to go $350 okay. on that one. Personally. Gosh. Um, what? Goop is just the weirdest. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, sometimes, sometimes I'm, I'm, see, this site, and I've talked about this before, this site has, like, gotten a considerable update. I think they might have, uh, they, they, they basically, they made it more difficult to find the weird stuff. Mm. I think they may have gotten a lawsuit or two. What? Um, <coughs> but I'm not seeing anyone in chat, which is fine. Um, the <laughs> Spectralite TM Eye Care Max Pro is reasonably priced, question mark, at $199. Damn. Wow. I was not expecting that. Um, yeah, like I said, I didn't really look at the, um, didn't really look at the price, just sort of saw the weird Hawkeye mask. Um, you know what? It does look strange. Let's. I don't actually know if any of that shit really works. I've seen, like, so many ads for shit like that where you can, like, put red lights on your face. And, like, I don't understand why it's supposed to work. Yeah, but I apparently. Because I've obviously seen those as well. I just figured um, um, these are not funny. They're just named weird and priced appropriately. I'm in the makeup section. I thought maybe that would do something. Um, let's go to the fragrance section. I just thought that filling your face with third grader laser beams was like a <laughs> 90s scam and we weren't doing <laughs> that anymore. No, we are. We're, we're coming back with full force on the third grader laser beams. I've got some candles. We know how hypey the candles are. Uh -huh. um, but they're not called funny things. This one's got the word naked in it. Yawn. <laughs> give, me some, give me some real. And see, this is the problem with this. Like, lorgasm? 
Uh, what? Oh, like floral orgasm. Ah, okay, I get it. Ooh, I was this, picturing this like, like the this floor. This smells like my vagina roll on. Oh. This smells like my orgasm roll on. What? I really just like <laughs> okay. I <laughs> part of me wants to make a burner email so I can buy one of these <laughs> <laughs> and just just to know what it smells like because I want to know if it really truly smells like a vagina or if it smells like perfume and they're just like haha bitches <laughs> yeah well that's the thing right does Gwyneth Paltrow have the cojones to make a candle that actually smells like vagina or is it a candle that smells like flowers and and stuff and it's like it's beautiful like all women it's like shut up I, yeah. I, I thought I was getting vagina smell yeah um what I have here because we've never done this before I don't think what is this actually I'm trying to figure it out <laughs> what kind of product are you what do you where do I put this well oh it's perfume it's perfume it's perfume okay Jesus okay. all right um and I wanted to do this because for two reasons. One, we've never done this, um, and two, it's got uh, it's called it's called Dirty Peach. Um, and this is what happens when you I'm switch already, the picture. I'm already mad. It goes into like disco mode. Oh. So I'm gonna um, show that. I just this camera. dirty like peach is a euphemism for butts. So what you're saying to me is. Somebody who didn't wipe their ass good enough, well enough. That's well, what that reminds me of when you said dirty peach. Well, let's go to the product description and see if there's any mention of or, assholes. Or maybe it is named after the men who said, I'm not gay, so I'm not going to wash my asshole. What? Have you not heard of that? No. There was this whole thing on the internet a few months ago. There was, like, men who were like, I'm not gay. I don't wash my asshole. And, like, the the internet what? just fucking lost it over that. Yeah, you're going to get, like, E. coli or yeah, some yeah. shit. Yeah. You're going to not. It's yeah, it's just a bad way to live your life. Yeah. So that when they, uh, when they say, and maybe you don't know the answer, when they say, I'm not going to wash my asshole, do they mean in the shower or mm -hmm. do they mean with toilet paper after they duke? I don't know. Okay. Anyways, we're moving on. Uh, <laughs> we got to talk about Dirty I, Peach. I don't want to get too far into the psyche of a uh, white conservative cishet man. Yeah, I don't uh, I don't know, man. Every time someone posts something crazy on Twitter and I'm just like, if this person's famous, they're getting canceled. I go to the comments and all the comments are like, yeah, totally. I'm in support of this. And it's like, yeah. what? How many people like this are there? Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, um, this is not fun news, so I didn't bring it, but there, there, there's like a UK is starting to ban like trans women from using and all the comments were like, good. And I'm like, what the fuck is happening? Anyways, uh, we got, we're here to talk about Dirty Peach, um, which is a perfume, I guess. Yes, it is. A I'm like 90 that it's a perfume. I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. A burst of citrus, orange peel, mandarin and grapefruit. Mingles with intoxicating jasmine, fresh peach. So already a lie because you promised me you'd be dirty. Yeah, that's pretty uh, rude. And green vetiver in an infusion that's delicate, sophisticated, and irresistibly sexy. Um, what is vetiver? I've heard this word before. I don't know. I think I, I think my brain always associated it with the fabric velvet. And that's just, I don't know why my brain did that. But every time I hear that word, I think of velvet. Vetiver, otherwise known as Chrysopogonzizanioids. It's grass. Oh. So it smells like earth? Perennial bunch grass of the family po Poaxia? Huh. Okay, yeah, I don't know any of those words. Anyways, uh, 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 green vetiver. Um, it's got to be, it's got to be one of the summariest scents we've ever encountered. Mm -hmm. Somehow perfume star Douglas, uh, I've encountered this gentleman before. He's just called Douglas. Oh, okay. Uh, somehow perfume star Douglas uh, captures the sun's warmth in what's sure to be an instant classic. 
Thanks, and the Doug. only the only bullet point is 1.7 fluid ounces or 50 milliliters. I guess. Well, a big thank you to Doug. Thank you, Doug, for your parfum. Yeah. For your plant-based au du parfum. Mm-hmm. 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 Made by uh, uh, made by Heretic. If it's plant-based, does that mean it goes bad in like a month? Yeah, that's what they're not telling you is the the expiration date. Oh my God, the ingredients page is three times as long as the product details. No. Um. Or read them all. We'll be here all night just all reading right. ingredients. All right, here I go. Or organic non-GMO <laughs> sugarcane alcohol. I already want to die. Yeah. Um, okay. What? How much money is the thing? This perfume? It's a, it's a, it has two different sizes, right? It does not have two different sizes. It was just listed in metric and the other one. Oh, okay. Sorry. I did not it's listen hard seven, enough. <laughs> it's 1.7 fluid ounces or 50 milliliters. I see. I didn't. My brain didn't. So it's like. Um, yeah, it's small. It's like that. Where am I on the camera? Where am I on the shirt? Yeah, it's like that big. Like that big. About. Dirty peach. Yeah, it's like the size of a peach. It's not unlike the size of a peach. Um, how much? I mean, for perfume, but there's like really expensive perfumes. Have you ever heard of the uh, perfume brand Heretic? No. That is who uh, Douglas has gone to <coughs> for this one. If anyone in chat has a guess how much money this tiny little bottle of perfume is and i will say this um sometimes with things like perfume or supplements or skin lotion it'll be like on this on this website it'll be like buy this many and you'll get this many shipped to your house for it that's not what this is this is just one tiny little bottle interesting for a set, for a set price and then when you run out you buy it again because you're a uh, impressionable millennial who uh, who wants to smell like summer who wants to smell like summer and wants to wants the answer to the question B wants the question wants the answer to the question what are you wearing to be dirty peach yes yep they just yep they want to tell someone dirty peach sounds like uh, a uh, drink at a like really skeevy dive bar oh sure yeah yeah um and i think i'd have the same reaction where i'm like i don't really care what's in it i don't think i'm gonna get that one yeah yeah uh so we got 70 dollars from mason okay i'm gonna go i don't know man i'm gonna go i guess 150 150 versus 70 let me do some quick math. Yes, that means that uh, Kelsey is the winner. I mean, sorry, Lightning is the winner. Yes, thank you. Um, because this Heretic Dirty Peach Doug perfume is uh, $125 Damn. per 50 milliliter bottle. Damn, that's a lot of monies. Yeah. For some perfume. Um, okay, let's do one more. Let's go to workout accessories. Fun. These Last time we did fun. this, you and I disagreed on what is a reasonable price for a jump rope. Um, yeah, I stick by, yeah, you're talking about the forever jump rope Yeah. for $85. Um, yeah, I, I stick to it that 85 is too much for a jump rope. I don't care what you're going to do with it. It's a jump rope. Uh, you could just buy that at the store and then do the, oh, no, sorry. We were looking at the jump rope, which is $55. Still too much. The handles are weighted, sure, but... Oh. I just feel like if you're buying... If you're specifically buying your workout gear from, like, a niche place, $55 for a jump rope doesn't sound that outlandish to me. But if you were buying your workout equipment from a place that cares about your well-being and doesn't want to uh, overprice everything... Um, then I can only imagine it would be 
you less, wouldn't but, shop at Goop then. But maybe I maybe <laughs> I don't know. Um, so the workout accessories was a way smaller section than I thought it would be. Hmm. Uh, let's see if um. Do they have like workout clothes or is it all like well, there's a whole clothes, equipment? There's a whole clothes section. Ooh, okay. I've ooh, okay. I've I've gone to the accessories section of the clothes section. And okay. I'm gonna click on tech accessories. Ooh, what? There's exactly Oh, one. oh, oh, like like a phone charm or something? Yeah. Well, there's exactly one. Why is it have its own section? Um, hold on, hold on. Okay, here we go. No, these sections are so small. Um, okay, you know what? Yeah. We're going to do this, because we haven't done one of these in a while. Let me just quickly, let me just quickly, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're gonna do this. Oh, there's, oh, there's so many pictures. Usually there's one or two, um, but there's eight pictures on this one. Oh damn. Um, so this is the Daybreak Weekender. It is. A it's a bag. It's a bag. Yep. Did you, now why did you know that based on the term Weekender? Yeah. Interesting. Uh, I've never heard this term before, but I can only assume that it means... Like, it, it fits the stuff that you need for the weekend trip. Right. The weekender. So, already, we are... Ooh, a very short description. Already, we are, like... You must have two, at least two bags. <laughs> one for the weekend, and one for everything else. True. Um, So, this was made by July, I guess. <coughs> it's called the Daybreak Weekender. It is a bag. Uh, items in final sale are not returnable, um, which is usually a disclaimer uh, saved for the sex toys. But in this case, they put it on one of the bags. Is it on sale? It is not on sale. You just can't return it? Correct. That's weird. Uh, ready to ship in two to three business days. Allow up to two weeks in transit. This duffel is crafted with a water-resistant cotton twill shell, top grain leather trim, and washed silver hardware. It's durable, size to carry on, and roomy with two interior zip pockets for organization. In case you were taking a plane to your weekend festivities. Yeah, you might be. The look of it will only improve with time as the leather develops a gorgeous patina. That's a word. It's going to get old and shitty, but it's going to look better. Patina, uh, usually green film formed naturally on copper and bronze. Oh, like the Statue of Liberty. So it's going to turn green and old, and that may, that's a selling point, I guess. Okay. Cotton twill with vachetta leather trim. Uh, d who cares about the dimensions? And it's got a... What's the big L? Is that liters? Yes. So they did the capacity in liters for some reason. It's got a 38 that's liter weird. capacity. That's weird. Anyways, yeah, this is a bag. Okay. Multiple pictures of the bag, but it is just a bag. All right. Uh, you can't return it because then you wait two to ten business days and you receive your bag and you open it. It just has a dildo in it and they with a with a fucking uh, note that says "haha sucker." That's it. <laughs> I clicked on. It's the whole reason. So the last one had like product details, ingredients, this that, b b more on this brand, other uh, other stuff. This one just says product details and then shipping and returns. And I clicked on shipping returns and all it says is this product is non-returnable. Well. So they're really driving home the fact that something's up with this bag. That you're going to get a secret dildo. And that's why you can't return it. It's part of the bag. Anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> so mm, this Weekender bag. I feel like. Uh, I don't know. How many liters does it hold again? 38. 38, 38 liters. liters. That's a lot of liters. Um, if the big L means liters, hold on. 
Because like a like a big bottle of soda, that's two liters, right? Oh wait, then it can't be li- it, it can't be liters. What's the big L? <laughs> I feel like it. I feel like it is liters though. No. How would I Google this? What big else would L, it be? Big L measurement. Big L. No, I'm still getting the wrapper. <laughs> There's a rapper called Big L who was oh. shot and killed in 1999. Oh, okay. Like. Well, I mean, R.I.P. Big I L. I Big L measurements, and it's giving me his height and weight. Oh, no. Oh, no. It's got to be liters, right? Because that would, would be... Why would this purse hold 38 liters? <laughs> Unless it's way bigger than... Than, than what I'm... That would be... What? Nineteen bottles of soda would fit in there? Yeah, there, there's no way. <laughs> there's no way, dude. I'm so bad at simple math. It took I me so long to fucking cut 38 in half. I just googled 38L and now I'm getting bra sizes. I don't know what thir- I officially don't know what 38L means. Well, uh 38L is a very large bra. I will tell you that right now. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. I thought the big L wasn't here today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Oh. Okay. Everyone's got jokes. 38 length? No, it says 38L capacity. And there's no space between 38 and L. This is how is this the most confusing thing that Goop's ever thrown at me? And, like, if it was going to be a measurement, it would be, like, length, width, and height, right? Well, I have those. I just skipped over it. It's 20.8 by 9.4 by 8.6. So it's not that, clearly, because it's a different measurement. Yeah. 38L capacity. You know what? Let me just Google those words. Excuse me. I really don't know how to price this weekender bag. I mean, I got to know how many fucking sodas I can fit in it first, I guess. Oh. 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 L is like a backpack thing. What? It It's like a specific... Oh, no. Backpack capacity is usually measured in either cubic inches, inches to the third, or liters, big L. I think it is liters. So, yeah, you could fit 19 bottles of soda in this is weekender this bag. Is way bigger than I thought? I think it is? It's It fits all the clothes and toiletries and socks and shoes that you need in for picture, a weekend. In this picture, there's stuff in it, and it looks like a scarf, a book, a hat, a wallet, and a like a travel coffee mug. I'll give him that. It fits a lot, but I don't think nine <laughs> bottles of soda is going to fit in here. Nineteen. Nineteen is even worse. That's <laughs> way more. Okay, whatever. It's a huge bag. How much? Uh, that you can um, only use on the weekend. <laughs> and it's carrying on okay. Yeah, if you use it on a weekday, they come and they take it from you, and they don't give you a refund, and they throw it right in the trash. Um, <laughs> and she sa- and she she spits in your face. She says, you can never watch uh, Avengers Endgame again. Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I want to say 200 bucks. 200 bucks. Uh, Mason says 270 for <laughs> a bag that holds uh, 19 two liters. <laughs> um, all right, Kelsey wins again. The Daybreak Weekender is, you got extremely close. The Daybreak Weekender is $195. And this is, I will remind you, a final sale. Damn. Not be returned to Gwyneth. I you you better like it then. Once this leaves Gwyneth's warehouse, she doesn't want to fucking even think about it again. <laughs> Didn't know how you were gonna end that. You were like, once it leaves Gwyneth's, and I was like, grasp. <laughs> I I don't know. No, you want to know what it is? You want to know why it's not returnable? It's not a random dildo. It's copies of Shallow Hal <laughs> oh, that no. no one would buy. Oh. That's her, right? Oh yeah, it yeah. is. That's such a horrible movie. I've I've heard I've heard talk of its. I've seen I I saw it when I was a kid and I was like, oh, what a great movie, what a great moral. And now I'm an adult <laughs> and I'm like, no, fuck this. <laughs> yeah. This guy's only in love with his fat girlfriend because he thinks she's skinny. Fuck yeah. that. <laughs> no. 
Oh, man. Was that Jack Black and Gwyneth Paltrow, yeah. right? Yeah. That's just That's just like, that's just like, wh- what year did this movie come out? Uh, it's got to be early 2000s, right? Yeah, I'm going to guess 2002. 2001. You were very close. Damn. So this this movie is like peak 2001 Hollywood. It's like, who's the prettiest and the fattest actor? Mm-hmm. Let's get him in a flick about body shaming. <laughs> Literally the most <laughs> body shaming anyone's ever done. Didn't, um, oh, what the fuck is her name? Didn't Amy Schumer basically make a movie that is, like, Shallow Hal again? Yeah, except she, like, I haven't seen this movie, but I, from what I know is, like, she is Amy Schumer-sized, which is not fat. But no. But <laughs> she's not, like, a size zero. Right. And she falls and hits her head, and when she wakes up, she forgets that she's... Her size. Oh right, she like forgets she that she's thinks ugly. That she's hot. And she, yeah, yeah. Um, and like, it's dumb. It's called... I haven't seen it, but I know it's dumb. <laughs> oh man, it's got a great title, I guess. It's called "I Feel Pretty." Yep. Yep. Um, maybe it has a good moral at the end. Maybe it's like. Oh, that whole time that I thought I was ugly, I wasn't living my life, and then I thought I was pretty, and I lived my life, and now I'm having a great life, but I don't know. Oh, no. I'm assuming Mason's talking about Shallow Hell. He says, fucking found out that it wasn't just a fat suit for the movie. They had a fat body double, and that might make it worse. Yeah. I agree. That, uh, that, that, w- I mean, I guess on one hand, I'm, I'm glad that they got a fat actress for a fat role even if her face was hidden with Gwyneth Paltrow's face but at the same time like you are just going to a fat lady and being like we want you to play fat person yeah just be fat just do the fat stuff didn't um speaking of people who are literally just typecast as fat person didn't Rebel Wilson do a movie like this too where she was like in a dream where everyone wanted her it was like Rebel Wilson and Chris Hemsworth or something oh maybe I don't Rebel Wilson is Th- that's who I'm thinking about, right? Wubble Wilson is from uh, Pitch Perfect. Yeah, she's Fat Amy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Never seen those movies. I'm sure they're. I'm. Sh- I'm sure they're great. Um, they're um, fine. I, I, I didn't hate them. Um, the isn't it romantic? It's called. Oh right. It's called isn't it romantic? And it stars Rebel Wilson, Adam Devine, Liam Hemsworth, and yeah. Priyanka Chopra. I can't um, believe this concept made a comeback. Natalie is a New York architect who works hard to get noticed at her job, but more likely to deliver coffee and bagels than design the season like skyscraper. <laughs> Things go from bad to weird when she gets knocked unconscious during a subway mugging and magically wakes up to find herself in an alternate universe. Always cynical about love, Natalie's worst nightmares soon come true when she suddenly discovered that she's playing the leading lady in a real-life rom-com. Oh, okay, that is different. Okay, that is that is it That is different. That, is that, sounds, that sounds manageable. That sounds watchable. Yeah, it is I Feel Pretty also. Did she, did I get that right? Did she also fall and hit her head? Yeah, no, you were right about I Feel Pretty. Okay. That's like, it just started out the same way. So I was like, did I get it wrong? No, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Wakes from a fall. Struggles, feeling insecurity and inadequacy on a daily basis. Wakes up from a fall, believing she is suddenly the most beautiful and capable woman on the planet. With this newfound confidence, she is empowered to live her life fearlessly and flawlessly. This is like, this is like Friends with Benefits, no strings attached. This is like you could read the titles of these films and then the the descriptions and not be able to like piece together which one is which. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Correct. I, you know, Tom Hopper's in this movie. I saw Friends with Benefits and I never saw the other one. What's that one called? No Strings Attached. That one. With Ashton Kutcher and Natalie Portman. Yeah, I never you saw that one. You watched Friends with Benefits with Justin Timberlake and Mila, Mila Kunis. Kunis. Yeah, I like those actors way better. Yeah. Yeah. I've always, uh, I've never seen that movie, but at the beginning of that movie, uh, I know this because of Cinema Sins, they, the movie starts with them being broken up with by their, like, former. And the, she's dating Andy Sandberg, but yeah. he's dating Emma Stone. Like they somehow got two way more famous people yep. to play the them than the actual. Yeah, um, Tom Hopper's a good looking dude. Sorry, this is not <laughs> not why we're here. Uh, I also Tom think Hopper Luther from Umbrella Academy. Oh yes, correct. <laughs> Sorry, I just 
You got are a, yes. It got on a uh, little uh, Tom Hopper message board. I saw him in, God, uh, the he was in the second, uh, what is that called? The Hitman's Bodyguard. I think he was in the second one of that. Oh, okay, sure. Uh, and I think it w- the second one was called The Hitman's Bodyguard's Bodyguard right, or something right. like that. Yes, yes. Um, those movies are pretty funny. Um, but he was in the second one, and it was so weird to see him with a normal body. Oh, I know, right? Because he's Luther, yeah, so he's yeah. always, like, huge. He, w- <laughs> he was um, <coughs> he was on Game of Thrones, um, and it's like... He, he, I was literally, I was in the MRC, mm-hmm. and me and Colby were both watching a thing, and he was watching Game of Thrones, and I was watching Umbrella Academy uh, the <laughs> day it came out. Um, That's funny. And I was just like, uh, look, hey. look, look what happened. And it just like, yeah, it's just like a completely different. Um, I um, I had never seen him until Umbre- Umbrella Academy, because yeah, me I either. famously well, me have either not I thought, watched. But he was in Game of Thrones, I guess. Yeah, I've never seen Game of Thrones. He has such a small role in that, in that uh and that show that I completely forgot that that was him. Yeah. He also played Wesker in that fucking terrible Resident Evil movie they made a few years ago where everyone was cast wrong and acted wrong and they tried to do Resident Evil 1, 2, and 3 at the same time. Fun. I fell asleep during I actually don't know how it ends. It could be the best ha- second half of a movie ever. Yeah. Uh, but I fell asleep. Um, I did not. I did not enjoy it. That sucks. Um, I just remembered what the movie's called. It's called The Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard. Oh, okay. So it's The Hitman's Bodyguard, and then it's The Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard as a sequel? Yeah. Got it. Yeah. Uh, a dumb and dumber approach yeah, yeah, to pre- naming yes, movies. Yes, exactly. Uh, but all three <laughs> of the main characters in that movie are hilarious. So. And one of them is Tom Hopper? No. Oh. It's, it's Ryan Reynolds, Sam L. Jackson, and... Why can't I remember her name? She's like, she's been in so many things. <laughs> um, why is my recall so bad? Salma Hayek? That one. Tom Hopper, Antonio Banderas, Morgan Freeman, Elodie Young. This one is a stacked cast, too. Yeah. They're pretty good. I think they're worth a watch. Sam L. Jackson and, and Ryan Reynolds obviously play really funny off each other yeah question though because this movie came out in 2021 um is ryan reynolds just do i've noticed something and other people have noticed it too ever since deadpool came out ryan reynolds has just like essentially been playing deadpool in every movie he's been in um no this one actually is different because uh in the first movie uh this happens in like the first 10 minutes he's like a bodyguard not like a hitman type person so he's like very like follows the rules straight edge kind of person and then something happens where like sam l jackson is a hitman and he escaped jail or something and now he has to like help sam l jackson get somewhere without being killed but he has like all these rules he's like oh always wear your seatbelt, like all this stuff so he's actually like the opposite of deadpool oh interesting in that movie have you seen um have you seen the adam project uh yes dude that movie was really good. It was so good. Inexplicably has like a ton of Marvel people in it for some reason. Yeah. It's got. It was good. Ryan, I should watch that again. Ryan Reynolds, Mark Ruffalo, Zoe Saldana, and uh, uh, what is her name? Jennifer Gardner, who was yes. Electra in the yeah. old Electra movies. Yeah, that's right. And I believe is going to reprise her role as Electra in Deadpool three. That might have just been a rumor, but. Um, that would be cool. Yeah. Um. Anyways. Um. I think that does it for us here Okay. on Thunder and Lightning Gaming. Um, uh, one thing. Hold on real quick. I'm over here, so I can do it over here now. Okay. I did it right. Um, thank you all for being here. Um, sorry about the weird day and the weird time and all that. Um, uh, <laughs> things are going to be a little weird uh, for a while because I'm going to New York Comic Con and all that. Um, but but uh, thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for being here. Yay. Um, I had fun. Yeah, this was this was great. Um, the link that Night J- Bot just posted in chat is a link to all our stuff, our YouTube, uh, our Twitch, our Instagram, our TikTok. Uh, go follow us on everything. Uh, subscribe on YouTube. All the free stuff. And if you feel so inclined, um, you can subscribe on Twitch. Uh, and we'll uh, see a little bit of that money. Um, 
and um, the next stream uh, might be, but probably won't be Friday. Uh, and if there's no stream Friday, there will definitely be a stream uh, Saturday uh, because that's when Drizzle and Tsunami are streaming, I think. I know we're like in a transition, but I'm not sure if that was like confirmed. Um, but I'm pretty sure Saturday is when they're streaming. Uh, uh, and I can only assume they're going to be doing some Baldur's Gate 3. And then Sunday, if we do stream, which we probably will, we're going to uh, be back in Final Fantasy X. I just finished doing some leveling up in that the other day. Saturday, I was correct. Um, Hell yeah. So look out for those. Thank you for being here. Um, and until next time, I'm Thunder. And I'm Lightning. And uh, could you do me a favor and point directly at the camera? And we'll see you later. Thank you.